everybody, welcome to the Black Sheep Props channel. I'm Steve, and I'm here to teach you the tips, tools, techniques, and materials for building your very own super cool EVA foam props. Now, in our last build, we went sci-fi when we built Ahsoka's lightsabers from Star Wars Rebels and The Mandalorian. Now, if you missed that build, we're going to include the link in the description below to our channel's homepage, so you can go over there and check out Ahsoka's lightsabers or uh, any of the other cool builds there. Now for this build, we're going to go video game. So without further ado, Black Sheep Props would like to introduce you to the newest member of the family. <laughs> yeah, check it out, man. This thing is a monster. Look at that. It is the Culling Blade from Dota 2. Check that Gigantor out. Holy smokes, man, look at that thing. Rustic, hacked up wood handle, octagon shaped, with leather wraps, wrought iron ring on the end of it, and the big crazy axe blades. Um, super jamming, super huge, and super easy, and super fun. Um, there it is, check that thing out. And we've got the hammered steel texture on the whole head there. Same thing on the wrought iron ring. It's got that hammered look. Um, really, really cool. So, in this episode, woo, making an EVA foam culling blade part one, we're gonna begin going step by step through the giant process, but the easy process of building this. Um, and if you wanna build along with us, and have your very own culling blade, we have a template. So we'll include the link in the description below to our channel storefront so you can go pick up a template if you want. Um, or don't, just hang out and chill and watch. Um, so that's it, if you're ready to hit it, let's make something. Okay, man, we're gonna start this big, giant, chunky thing with doing our blades. All right, so we're gonna be layering a bunch of this stuff up. We've got some four millimeter sheets here. And we've got this big, thick 48 millimeter piece that's gonna to attach to this half inch thick 12 millimeter piece. So we're gonna start by cementing these two pieces together. All right, there's one side. Now we'll bring in the 12 millimeter piece. Okay, there we go. Now you know the drill with contact cement. You coat both pieces, let them both dry, and then it can make contact. Both are dry. Now we're gonna come in, we're gonna set this on here and push it down. Two and a half inches thick. Look at that, those are giant slabs. All right, now we're gonna come in with these four millimeter pieces, okay? Now, we've got one for each side of both of these, okay? These are gonna be the two blades. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and we're gonna cut these centers out of our four millimeter pieces. There we go. That's it, that easy. Just take your time, cut all the... Then right around your curve. That's it, just like that. And that's all possible doing real intricate stuff like that by standing your knife straight up and then you can pivot real easy. Okay, there's all four cut out. Here's all. Right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're gonna take this giant thick piece that we made and we're gonna separate these two sections on the bandsaw. Okay, we actually have a slight problem. We cut one end off, but this is too wide to go through the bandsaw. 
So we're gonna have to use our box cutter. And so, so we're gonna do a partial cut first, just to get it started. There we go. We've got our partial cut done, and we're gonna feed this back through. There we go, nice. All right, now we can cut these end cuts out on the bandsaw. All right, there we go. Man, that is huge. There's our A side and here is our B side. Okay, now we come in with our B patterns that we cut out. All right, now this. All right, there we go, we'll give it a minute. We're gonna set it down right along the edge. So we talk about this all the time, don't just drop it down, squeeze it in a little bit to fit everywhere. Now we're gonna take this piece and we're going to flip it around and we're gonna put it on this side so we've got the mirror image on both sides, right? So there it is. We've got our recessed details on both sides. Now we're gonna bring our template back in. This is the B blade, so we're gonna bring our B template back in and we're gonna line it up. All right, there we go. Wow, look at that, man. Good grief, is that a big, thick piece of foam. What do we end up with here? We ended up with, wow, three inches thick. That's crazy. See how we've got the cool little recessed details, though, on both sides? Now, the reason we didn't have this thin piece extend all the way over is because we're gonna be cutting this off next. Okay, so let's get some templates ready, and I'll show you what we're gonna do. Okay, now we're gonna bring in our template again. We cut this piece off. Let's line it up. Just like that. All right, now we've got this inner line and this inner line drawn, and now we're gonna draw a center line right down this blade. And this is just the rough guide. Okay, there we go. All right, now, Ooh, this is gonna be a humdinger right here. All right, we've got our inner line on both sides drawn, okay? Now we've got our center line drawn. Okay, now you've seen us do this before. We did this many times. We did this when we built Azog's Mace. We've done this on several other things, but we're now going to come in with our box cutter and we're gonna cut this blade off on an angle. And we're gonna go from this line to this line. All right, let's make sure our knife is sharp. Line up from line to line. All right, now we're just gonna keep going all the way through our blade, like this. Just take your time, don't rush, don't go fast, just saw back and forth. Okay, now we're gonna move our hand over to this side. And we're going to keep going. See that? We're just sliding back and forth. Okay, make sure you're nowhere near your hand. Don't worry, we aren't. All right, look at that. Wow! That is crazy! Nice, see that? That's how we started, with a square edge. That's why we didn't care about anything past this line. That's why this piece of foam stopped right here because we're going to be cutting that off. Now when you flip it over, see that's gone. This little edge right here is gone. All right, sweet. Now we're going to flip it around and we're going to do the same thing on this side. All right, we're going to go from this line right up to the peak, okay? Now this is going to take a little more being careful. Let's resharpen. Let's make sure we're really sharp. And let's get going. Okay, we're gonna take our time. 
We're gonna try to meet right up with that peak right here. Okay. And we're coming towards our hand, so let's move it away from our hand now, like this. All right, gonna come right out the other side. All right, now watch this. Boom, look at that. We got a peak right there in the middle. That's sweet. All right, now we might cut these little gouges a little bit deeper. That's All right, that's a blade. Now we're gonna do all these same techniques to this other blade. All right, there we go. Check it out, man. Two blades, almost the same, but just a little bit differently shaped. We cut our edges off of both blades, looking good. Now we've got some choices. Have our dust mask on. We're gonna dremel off a lot of these edges to round it over. And then we can decide what we're gonna do right here with the blade. We can leave these knife mark lines to give it that kind of hand-done look, or we can try to smooth it out a little bit. But we're going to start dremeling and we'll see what we get. All right, now we're going to come in with our smooth bit and we're going to clean that up a little bit. All right, now we're going to get our rough bit back in here. There we go, we got some of that really rough stuff off of here and here. And now we'll come back in with our smooth bit again. All right, there we go, that's pretty, that's pretty nice. A little bit. 80 grit sanding paper, all right, on our sticks. And we're going to really clean it up. All right, now we're going to come in with our 220 just to clean it up a little bit more. That's beautiful. All right, now we're gonna get a little bit of this bandsaw stuff off of the side with our 80 grit. All right, there we go. Now you can take your time and you can go way crazier than that on shaping it. And that is looking good, man. There's half a blade. Now, we're gonna seal it. There we go. That is a beautiful axe head right there. Look at that thing. Crazy. <laughs> wow. And super easy. You can totally nail this. This was so easy. Gotta have a bandsaw though. Gotta have a bandsaw. There you go. Now we're gonna do all those same details to this rough piece right here. Okay, our next piece of our axe is gonna be this center section that the two blades attach to. All right, we're going to be bulking this up with a 48 millimeter, a 24 millimeter, 
and a three millimeter. All right, so we're just gonna contact cement all these together. All right, we're gonna do these first and then we'll attach this. All right, now we're gonna have to knock these out on the bandsaw because that's pretty huge. All right, that's it. That's a big. All right, so what we did was we drew our mark where each piece of the blade is gonna stick. We've got it marked two and one, so we know. All right, that means that this is going to be the front or the back. We want this thing to look like hammered metal. So we're gonna come in with our Dremel and we're gonna be kind of messing this thing up a lot. All right, so we're gonna take out our smooth bit and we're gonna put in our little round bit that's gonna help us bounce up and down and make a bunch of dents and stuff all over here. All right, now when we start denting, we don't wanna to touch inside here because we want it flat for where the blade's gonna to touch. So let's get our dust mask on. All right, check that out. That looks like hammered metal and we've got our edge all chewed up. Now we're just gonna do that all the way around the whole thing. All right, chew up the edges and dent it up, except for these two areas. All right, check that out. Man, that is bad. That looks like hammered steel. That is too crazy. Chewed up. All right, here we go. Now we took our silver Sharpie and we drew these marks, all right, on the four sides. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in with our wood burner. We've got it heated up. And now if you're gonna be wood burning, you are melting plastic. So do not be unsafe. Make sure you have a fan. We have a fan off to the side. It's gonna blow the fumes away from our face. And we're also gonna wear a dust mask. Draw our damage. There we go, just like that. We're just gonna mess it all up using the wood burner. That's cool. Look at that around the corner, that's nice. All right, see that smoke coming off of there? That's toxic. That's why you make sure you got a fan. See how it's blowing off to the side? It's not going straight up. It's blowing that way. So it's not going in my face. That's nice. And I have a dust mask on. All right, there we go. Look at that. We've got some gouges on there. All right, now we're going to take this 48 millimeter piece. We're going to knock this out on the bandsaw, but this is the angle that we need the cut to be. We don't want a perfectly perpendicular cut. We want it tilted so it tapers. And this is the angle we want. So we're gonna use this to tip our bandsaw blade to the right angle, and then we're gonna cut it on the bandsaw. Hot 
dog, look at that. Wow, look at that cool taper right there. It's got all the angled sides, it's got the cool taper on it. Now we're going to slightly round this edge over so it's not so hard. Slightly rounded it off. All right, there we go. We've got it slightly rounded off. Now we put our dust mask back on. We've got our wood burner all heated up. Now we're gonna come in and we're gonna make this look like wood. So we're gonna do wood grain with our wood burner this time. All right, now it's really easy. We're just gonna come in and we're going to burn through the top. We're just gonna drag through. bunch of these little streaks on here just like that. See what that's doing? It's starting to make it look like wood around the top edge. All right, there we go, wood grain. Nice, that's the top of our handle. Really cool. Line up one of the Sharpie lines and don't just drop it down. All right, we got it here. Let's go around and make sure we're in a good spot. And there we go. All right. That is crazy. Look at that. The wood. Little scratches in the blade. Cool. And then you just take the tip of it and you just drag through these ends like this and it starts to look all chipped up on the end that looks nice all right notice how the fumes are moving away from me because I have the fan on Okay, now we're gonna come in and we're gonna take this top section of our blades, not on the edge, just up here, and we're gonna make it look like the hammered steel also. That is nice, looks like hammered metal on both sides. That's really cool. And we did it on this part of the blade as well. Took a long. All right, give it a minute or two, let it dry. Line it up and then make sure it's right on our marks. Which it, make sure it's right and it is. All right, look at that. That is nuts. That is. All right, now we're gonna take our 18 millimeter foam. That's three quarters of an inch. We're gonna cut these four squares out. All right, now we're gonna have to figure out a way to taper this up to a peak, all right? So let's find our peak. All right, there we go. That's going to be our peak right in the middle. Now we're going to... All 
All right, there we go. There's four really rough pyramids. All right, now what we're gonna do is we are going to come in with our round bit and we're gonna bounce around on these and we're gonna rough them up. Mush it down to make sure that it gets good contact because this is a bumpy surface. And there we go. Look at that. Wow, those are some banged up big rivet things. All right, now we're going to do the two on this side. All right, we're going to start with the handle, and that's going to be made of a 48 millimeter piece of foam, which is two inches and an eight millimeter piece. All right, so we're just going to stick these together. And... All right, so now comes a very interesting cut we're gonna make. Let me reach over here and grab our template. That's our template right there, look at that. Looks like a stop sign. All right, that's how we're gonna be cutting out this handle. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna send this through, we're gonna get it cut out on the bandsaw, and then we're gonna start doing angled cuts. All right, there we go. Holy cow, another super thick piece of foam. Okay, right here. All right, there we go. Now we're gonna make those same two marks on every one of the sides. Okay, now we're gonna go over to the bandsaw and we're gonna tilt it on this angle. And then we're gonna follow these lines through on it. All right, look at that. <laughs> Looks like a giant pencil. That's crazy. All right, okay, there it was. The axe head, crazy easy. Um, you saw how we used our knife to taper the blade. You saw how we used our wood burner to put some of this damage in here. And you saw us do more bouncing than Michael Jordan did to create this hammered steel effect all over the head and the blades. But really easy, a lot of work to do that. Took a lot of time, but it was so easy. Um, and we barely, barely, barely got ready to start the handle. Um, so uh, that was it. Pretty easy stuff. You saw how we did it all. You can totally nail this. Um, that's it. That concludes Making an EVA Foam Calling Blade Part 1. Hope you liked it. If you did, give us a like, share us with a friend, and subscribe to this channel. And together we're going to go step by step through a lot more super cool builds so that you get the props you deserve. Thanks for coming. See you next time.